Let's talk about Lord of the Rings. But before that, let's let's play the fancy intro. Okay. Let's go. good intro it is a pretty good intro you did a good job yeah let's uh oh now i gotta get back to the photos darn it well just you know this is the the high level of professional quality you come to expect from uh brody even talk pinball if you're listening then you don't know anything wrong is happening but there it is lord of the rings let's uh lord of the rings uh it's a 2003 game from stern pinball Designed by so I was surprised I looked up the the designers and all that on this. It was designed by George Gomez, is who I always attribute this game to. But it also said Keith Johnson and Chris Graner, which was like okay, okay. Uh, art by Jerry Vanderstelt, Kevin O'Connor, and Margaret Hudson, and software by of course Keith Johnson. And it also uh, credits Dwight Sullivan uh, with software on this. So it's a uh, let's uh, let's talk about the art. That's what we start with. We got it, pictures up here. Let's talk about art on Lord of the Rings. Well, it did come in two varieties. I, I will point that out. Uh, this is the standard translate. And here's the Ellie, which has the unfortunate. Uh, so if you've never seen the Lord of the Rings Ellie artwork, they decided to outline everything with a thick black rule on the back glass. And once you see the, uh, the penis in the beard here, you can't unsee it. <laughs> see it? No, I'm not going right to see there. it. Right there. Right there. Oh, uh, <laughs> Jesus. Go back to the other one, Kevin. Go back to the other one. Right, no, let me, see the, let, me see the, let me see the other one. Okay. I can't see it. Yeah. There. Uh, well, yeah. It, it's kind of there. But once you see it on there. Oh, that's terrible. Gandalf's beard. That's really bad. <laughs> God damn it. I ruined it for all of you. So now you can save money and not get the LED. What a, what a jerk you are. You're just like... <laughs> I never knew that. And there you're you right. Like, I, I was like, I don't know. Uh, oh. Well, time to sell them. You just lowered the value of uh, the rings. <laughs> Pinball market trends. This one's or trending down. Or created gentlemen. a market for an alternate translate. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> the, no, the no junk mod. <laughs> All, right. All right. So there's one negative got, against no the back, No back last no talk. Backlash. I had to point that out. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. So this is the cabinet art for the... The <laughs> came at the right time. <laughs> <That's all. laughs> Why would they do that? Not that look good. Exactly. Exactly. Questions. <laughs> so many questions. I don't have the answers. I'm sorry. They'll be on the next podcast. We'll we'll bring on the artists to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. an interview. Um, and this is the cabinet for the LE. So it's a nice looking cabinet, right? Looks good, except for the outlines and the, the outline is weird. Then it's did really the weird. I, like, I don't like that effect at all. It looks yeah. like something's wrong with it. Yeah. I like the cabinet itself. The, the back glasses. I actually prefer the, the art on the pro. So art, when I think of art on a pinball machine, this is not one I look to for as being a great example of art on a pinball machine. I think it's pretty good. You like it? I think it's it's perfect for the theme. Okay. I think they did a really good job with the theme. I like it. Yeah. I think it's kind of gross. There's a lot of green and brown, and I mean it fits the theme, but yeah, but it's that's all photoshoppy, and I think it, I don't know, I think it does the theme it is it's in line with the theme theme integration. I think, I mean it's not really fair to compare it to Hobbit, but I'm going to anyways. But Hobbit is that same universe, right? And Hobbit is beautiful. Like look at the play field on it; it's got color, but it still has that feeling of like medieval adventure kind of uh, Middle Earth kind of stuff. Um, I'll give you that. Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Blah. Hobbit Hobbit is 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 much better than that. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> um yeah, I I'm not a fan of the art on uh Lord of the Rings. It does it does okay. Um this guy's new. To, I was going to say Tora now must be new. You've never no, obviously swear you've before. obviously never <laughs> listened to the podcast or seen the stream, my friend. Yes. This is par for the course. Profanity just flows freely in yeah. the lane. So mm-hmm. Enjoy it. Or not. Either way. You're welcome I, to not enjoy my, it. As my well. goal is never to become becoming. <laughs> so, so. You're, you're succeeding, so yeah. you're doing it. Yeah, done. Uh, all right, yeah, Lord of the Rings. It's okay. Uh, Nick likes it. I think it's, 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 it gets the job done. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't. I was certainly not bad. I think it's. I think it's good with the theme. I'm. I'm fine with that. 
double raid. Oh, thanks, PBU and, who, and whoever else we missed. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right, sound. Well, it's got, first of all, I mean, unfortunately, it's got that MIDI muffled, like, it's uh, a white, white star, star yeah. system. Yeah. So they've got the theme music. Mm-hmm. They've got the voice of uh, Frodo. Did they get? Is that real? I Chris think that's Williams? really him. It sounds like him. Okay, and they've got uh, um, who's the other dude? I don't know. That does the jackpot. John Ray's Dave, whatever the name is. Dude, it's not really the best jackpot callouts in this game. But the actor who does it, yeah, the I guy don't, who's don't know. Indiana Jones or whatever, like that guy. Whatever, I don't know his name. Okay, I think I said it right. <laughs> but anyways, they got him. So good, like yeah, good music call outs mm-hmm. it's just low quality yeah. which hampers it yep. like if it had improved like quality it'd be fantastic it uh yeah I, I the sound package is excellent on this especially for the era it's got that cool like the chill out of mode music and then when you get into stuff it gets super intense it does the double jackpot one yeah it's so, good that, and then have you ever, i assume you've gotten the super jackpots on it when you when you get through all that come on of course i have what how does it go <laughs> Just, Super just so I remember, jackpot, ho, 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 like that. <laughs> At some point in my life, yes, I, I, I did. It, <laughs> I, I did it on stream last week, and it, I was just smiling. It was so like you want pinball to give you those kind of reactions. Nailed it. Skip Natty confirmed as John Reese Davis. There right. you go. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Was also in Indiana Jones. There you go. And does the callouts for Indiana Jones? Boom. Right there you go. It's two, all coming two, together two now. Two pinball machines. He's uh-huh. in. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, that's what you want out of a sound package. This is top tier sound package, despite the sound. Well, it begs the questions. The like people gotta love jackpot callouts, which are really good. Yeah. Why don't we have more good jackpot? Why doesn't every machine have good jackpot callouts? And it doesn't. Not every machine does. That's true. I always go back to Avatar. Love the um, love yeah. the callouts, man. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. And then you get stuff like C- what was it CSI? Yeah, that well, this, it's the two extremes, right? <laughs> but most things, exactly most games idea. are middling. Yeah. You know, yeah. You, but I'm with They you. don't all nail it. All right. Okay. Good job. Good job on the sound. Toys. All right. I got some pictures. We can look at pictures. That's, that's, there you go. There's some cool stuff on this. You guys thought all the little, little, the little dolls were, were not stock, but they are. Yeah, I didn't realize that. Yep. It looked like things that people glue on pinball machines. It, that's it where does. they probably got inspired from. <laughs> exactly. They're like, ooh, remember all those little guys that they stuck on Lord of the Rings? You can imagine how many shopping carts Stern had at Walmart when they were buying those up. <laughs> but even th- those aren't the like toy toys. There's yeah. some really cool stuff. There's in this. actually toys in there. It's got the ring. They which, did this at 2003. I know. Imagine that. But it, the ring like grabs the ball and magnets wiggle it, it back does. and forth yep. and it flings it out the ramp. It's got the little vertical up kicker, which is, eh, it's got the, but the, the big uh, dude in the middle, what's his name? Uh, Balrog. Balrog. And he swings out. He's a bash toy. Yep. He's cool. Um, yes. um The tower kind of, yeah. In the shakes. back right corner, kind of like tilts like to the left, I think, kind mm-hmm. of shakes. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. It's got the big sword ramp. It's, it's like, got the sword ramp. It's, it's got like that like little like play field where it rolls over the switches, mm-hmm. um, kind of like the um, of Plinko. Dead. Yep. Path um, of the Dead. It's like if you took, uh, the Deadpool layout with the ramp or the, yeah. the sword ramp, and then added a whole bunch of extra awesome, cool toys. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah, and charge far less for it. Yes, yeah. Imagine that. So I uh, was like thirty three hundred when it came oh, out. It was thirty two hundred dollars in two thousand three. Yeah. Those were the days. All right, all right. So these are high quality toys. I like the toys. Uh, let's talk about DMD and lighting. Uh, it's got good lighting on it. Mm-hmm. Again, we're looking at the time time period. I mm-hmm. try to try to put it at that mm-hmm. for, for the 2003. Good lighting, pretty good DMD. Yeah, it is. It really shines with the color DMD too, as as most games do. It's uh, it, it's got a lot of good hand drawn like dots, which I'm okay. a fan of. Yeah, it's not. They didn't take the the movie. It wasn't and digitized to nonsense. In there. Yeah, yeah, somebody spent the time it made custom art for the display uh really good so for the era top tier uh gameplay so the way the game shoots and feels and that sort of thing so what do you think shoots it's a fan layout george gomez i mean that might say a lot to some people Mm -hmm. um perfect way of describing it shots are very flowy very very smooth very butter like um 
it's a good shooting game. It's a pretty safe game too. Yeah, like this is not. Uh, I I would I would describe like a John Board game like a shoot and recover. Mm-hmm. The ball's always out of control. This the ball is like in control, very much so throughout the game. I mean that's how you can have these like forty minute games on on a game like Lord of the Rings. It can yeah, last it, forever. And you need it too on a game with that much code depth. You need to be yeah. able to get through it. It fits the theme. Mm-hmm. You know we're talking three movies here, three books. So yeah. games like that and like Hobbit. Uh, pirates, they need to be longer playing right. Right? if you're going to integrate into the theme. And you're going to have that much content in the game. It can't be a, it's going to kick your ass every time. Yeah. Iron Man game, you'd never get, you'd never see the end of it. So, so absolutely fitting to the theme. One of the best uh, layouts that George Gomez has done, I think the only one that comes close is Monster Bash, in my opinion. Okay. Um, you know, those are his t- top two games layout-wise, as far yeah. as I'm concerned. You know, oddly enough, or maybe not oddly enough, but that game is pretty damn similar to Sopranos. In yeah. terms of layout, have you you've noticed That's that, true. right? Yeah, I would put Sopranos in that category. Plays a little, yeah. plays a little differently, but mm-hmm. it very much. I mean, you can kind of put it in CAD, Kevin. <laughs> That's for you, Skip. That's for you, Eric Minier. Everybody else in Discord, just overlay it. Little, exactly little, some 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 deep jokes. There. Exactly. <laughs> it's like the rule set. Exactly. Hey, right. uh, yeah. So he, you know, Gomez, kind of like kind of like uh, Borg, right? They have some some go to elements and, Ooh, and. Somebody said Johnny Mnemonic. I love Johnny Mnemonic, by yeah. the way. Another Gomez game. That Johnny's game is. Good. I love it because it's it's kind of fast and brutal. Super fast. Yeah. But now that's not a long playing game. That's like my ideal George, George Gomez game. Yeah. That's like if you took the Gomez layout and mash it up with Iron Man. Yeah, you'd come up with something like that's that. That's my favorite George Gomez game. Ooh, there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> cat, skip Natty. Skip Natty like the cat call out. <laughs> um, all right, rules where this game shines deep right? deep keep johnson yeah that's why people buy this game having their collection and, and it's why it's one of the you know considered one of the top top is it top 10 still i think so i can look probably, probably in there yeah mm-hmm. um you it's talk, got I'll deep rules it you know the rules uh incorporates three movies three books there's a lot too it's very hard to get to what's the ultimate um Valinor. Valinor yeah. is the ultimate like wizard mode super hard to get to so there's a lot of a, a lot to kind of sink your teeth into. Currently number five on the pin side down one. All right. Yeah. So there's a reason. You know. So this is a game that you really need to have it in your house to appreciate it. And it took me a long time to for it all to start clicking. And I, I streamed it about a week ago. And I got I got Destroy the Ring. And I got to there and back again. I'm like... And I started getting this, the super jackpots and like all the stuff. I started making all this stuff happen. I'm like, that's why people love this game. Because you can go into it and you can play a bunch of multi balls and not really understand what's going on, but once you once you understand what's happening, uh, this game shines. I think the one thing that I'm kind of spoiled now with the the LCD screens and how they communicate to the player everything that's going on is that there's a lot of times in that game I don't really understand what's happening because there's not enough inserts, there's not enough on the display to like, yeah. let me know like. I didn't know I almost had it there and back again ready. Mm-hmm. There was like nothing telling me like what I needed to do or or that it was almost there. Uh, it's just kind of like somebody in chat was like, "Oh, you're gonna go there and back again." I was like, "How?" And he's like, "Oh, just start the next mode or whatever." I was like, "Okay, cool." So, well, I mean, that's a perfect example to show that look, these LCD screens are not just gimmicks, right? Especially when the game actually has some depth to it, you really need them. It can be really vital and informative. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I, I totally see what you mean by so, that. So I think this this game was ahead of its time mm-hmm. in a lot of ways, as far as very much rule so. set and and code. That's why you see people calling for a, a vault edition of this because it's just there's so much to do in it. Uh, it's great, great value, great bang for the buck. It's a, it's not a cheap game, but yeah, uh, it provides a lot of gameplay, and it's a it's a game a lot of folks that like to have in their home because of it. They did rerun it a number of times, yeah, but I don't think they've reran it since like 2010. So yeah. it's, it's been not a while. an official vault edition. Yeah, once since sure. they started doing that. All right, uh, last ability. Um, I think this game has the potential for fantastic last ability in a collection because, as we mentioned earlier in the podcast. Uh, rules are key to wanting to keep a game around, having things to do. You know, often when we beat things, we move on to the next game. Video games, you beat it, move on to the next, right? Yep. You, you might play a video game to death, but once you beat it, that's it. Mm-hmm. Next challenge. Pinball machines are not terribly different. Mm-hmm. Um, if you can, if you're getting to the wizard mode, lose interest, move on to the next game. This game, there's a lot to kind of cut your teeth on. Um, so yeah, I think this is one of those games that there's a reason it's in the top 10. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that it has less ability, which is due to the fact that it has a deep rule set. Yep. And it's got, it's not just like, there's not just Valinor, there's destroy the ring, which I 
I, I will step up to the game and be like, all right, I'm going to destroy the ring. And then you do that and you feel satisfied. And you're like, that's cool. And it's right. like, well, maybe I'll try there and back again. Now that I understand how to do it, maybe I'll start going for that more. And then all along the way, you're like, oh, maybe I'm kind of building towards Valinor one of these times. One of these times, it's all going to come together and maybe I'll have that amazing game. It does a great job of dangling that carrot out for you to, to kind of always have something to go for. And maybe someday you'll get there. Probably not. But yeah. <laughs> um, I think that's, to me, that's what's appealing in a, a, a pinball machine that, to have in your house. Um, you know, there's other games that I, like, Beatles is super fun. Would I ever have it in my house? No. Because, yeah. again, it's too You'll expensive. you be bored of it. And you'd be bored of it really Super really fast, quick. yeah. So. This is a good game to recommend, I think, to people who are, are sort of new to the hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, because it will, um, it's, it's playable, mm-hmm. right? It's not a brutal game. So you'll get your shots down. And you can kind of keep on learning things as you grow. And as you grow as a pinball player, there's more stuff to kind of unlock and more um, goals to go after. Yeah. Uh, so that you're going to get a lot of value out of a game like Lord of the Rings. Absolutely. All right, so let's put some numbers on it. Let's go over to the uh, the website. We can look at the uh, the the schedule, the, the whatever it is, the, the key. Uh, so from zero to two, you should burn it. Three to five is an expensive night. Like we got a couple games out of that category tonight, thankfully. Thankfully. Uh, six to eight is a solid game, and a nine and ten is a buy it. What say you, Nick Lane? So every, keeping everything in mind, this is not a game that would go in my collection because I, I think I'm over it. I've played it. I played it enough. Um, it did capture my attention for a decent period of time. You know, I've spent a lot of time on Lord of the Rings. We had there was one on location. I played the heck out of it. I'd go to collector's house and play it. I'm sort of over it now, but to me, all things considered, it, it, where we are in 2019, it's an 8.5. Um, I, I I did just encourage people to buy it. So, I, especially if you're newer in the hobby, I think it's a great game. Maybe more experienced players or someone like myself that likes maybe a more of a shoot and recover type of game. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a little bored where the shots become really, really safe and I can I can do them over and over again. Um, so good, very good, 8.5, almost buy it, but I will never own this game. I want to I wanna just look. I want to see what this has been selling for. I'm going to put it at a 9. I think it's a buy it. Um, it's got a lot, lots of offer like you talked about. You're not going to get bored of this. Um, the only thing, the only area I think where it may be lacking in its personal preference, it's subjective, is the art. Uh, but like you said, it's fitting for the for the theme. Um, let's see, market. Honestly, what, what would fall? Name is asked. What would fall in the zero two range? Magic girl, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like it's a uh, box of li- yeah. burn it. Yeah, burn it. Well, you can't burn it because it's worth money. But <laughs> that's a nice piece of art, I guess. I guess. Yeah, that's. Thank goodness. So for I don't know. Zombie. Nothing. Nothing is yet has we've we've touched has come into zero to two. So this is in the fifty one to six thousand range for that price. Yeah, it's a buy it. Yeah, you it's compare good. that to like a Houdini or something that's going oh, for six grand. Oh yeah, all day. Yeah, just just buy Lord of the Rings. Yeah, <laughs> a proven it's, game. It's, there you a go. A proven game. Proven that's game. good. Amazing finished complete rule set. Um, it's not gonna fall apart. Not on gonna you. fall apart. You're gonna be able to sell it for what you bought it or more. Yep. Like there you go. Yep. Get yourself a Lord of the Rings. All right. All right. Uh, we didn't get any Q&A this month, which is good because we have That's a lot fine. of podcasts anyway. Thank you. Thanks for taking so, a month off I didn't us. really put 